Hi everyone, so I'm Mr. Pugh and I'm the choir teacher at San Dimas High School in Lone Hill Middle School. And we are going to be learning today about pitch, the treble clef, as well as the bass clef and grand staff. We have a lot to dig into, but first we're going to talk about what exactly is pitch. So pitch is a sound determined by the speed of a vibration from the source of the sound. Now for us, as singers, our vibration, the source of that sound is our voice. If you are an instrumentalist, it could be your instrument. It is the piano, the trumpet, whatever is making that sound, whatever is causing that vibration, is what causes pitch. Now pitch, the thinner, the quicker the vibration, the higher the sound, and the slower, the lower the sound. So let's look at what that looks like on our staff. So right here, we have a staff. A staff is the foundation upon which all of our music is written. This five-line, four-spaced staff allows us to demonstrate pitch. The lower on the staff the note is, the lower the pitch. The higher on the staff, the higher the pitch. You'll also notice that we number our lines and spaces from the bottom. So the bottom, we have one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, so on and so forth. So each line and space is named. Each one of these lines and spaces corresponds to a white note on the piano. A white key on the piano is expressed in these lines and spaces. Now, there's obviously a lot of keys on the piano. You can see over here, I have a whole big old piano with a lot of keys. So the way that we zoom in on specific parts of our music is we add clefs. Clefs allow us to differentiate higher pitches from lower pitches. This one on the left here is our treble clef, and this one here on the right is our bass clef. We're going to start off with our treble clef, also known as the G clef. G as in golly, I wish I had studied this sooner. <laughs> so the G clef, this line right here is the G line. So any note placed on this line is G, and we know it's a G clef because right there in the middle is it circles the G line. Now, if we go up one space, this is an A. Note that it's not an H, all right? We have no H's in music. Only Germans do that. So, moving on, we continue through the alphabet. Our alphabet continues A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then repeats again. So all you have to do in music is remember the first couple letters of the alphabet. Super easy. Now, if we get to the end here, what happens when we get to this space where there's no more lines or spaces? Now, what we do is we call in our friend the ledger line. So the ledger line here, what it does is it allows us to pretend like a line went all the way across, but instead of showing that whole line all the way across, instead we just have it in one little spot. Now with that ledger line, we can continue with our alphabet. So we had A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and what comes again? A, that's right, because we're musicians, we're lazy. We only have to remember the first couple letters of the alphabet. So for our treble clef, we have this G line that is being circled by the treble clef, and it goes all the way up. Now let's look at something else. We have our bass clef, also called the F clef. Now the F clef is so-called because guess what? These two little dots and this little dot here all circle around this F line. Now, just like with our treble clef, we could number these one, line one, space one, line two, space two, so on and so forth. But as long as we know F, we can fill in the rest of them. Because we can say, oh, in our musical alphabet, if I continue up in pitch, if I ascend, I'm going through the alphabet F, G, then I repeat A. If I was to go down, I would do F, E, D, C, B, A, and then continue the pattern again. So between our treble clef and our bass clef, we now have kind of a rough idea about where these notes go. Now, why does this matter? Why are there two clefs? Why do we have to worry about all of this stuff? Let's talk about the grand staff for a minute. So the grand staff is a theoretical staff of 11 lines. Now, 11 lines is 10 plus 10. So if we had our treble clef of 5 and our bass clef of 5, 
if we had a special one in the middle, that would be our grand staff. Now, if we were to take away one of these lines, we end up with two regular staffs. We can put the treble clef here on top, the bass clef on bottom, and you can notice how they're joined in the middle by this C, that 11th line we took away. So this note here is called middle C. Middle C is what allows us to create a grand staff between all of these notes. Because of this middle C, we can combine all of our notes together and we can create our grand staff. So a couple of ways that we can memorize this is by using some cool little uh, mnemonic devices to remember these. So let's delve into those here. All right, so here are a couple of mnemonic devices we can use. I know they seem kind of childish and silly, but I encourage you to come up with your own. So here we have every good boy deserves football. I've heard every good boy deserves fudge, every good boy does fine. Either way, these line notes from the bottom to the top as they ascend in pitch are E, G, B, D, and F. If we look at the space notes on the treble clef, it's a lot easier. F-A-C-E, or face. If we go down to our bass clef, we have G, B, D, F, and A. Greedy big dogs fall asleep, or good burritos don't fall apart. There's a lot of wonderful little <laughs> anachronisms. No, what's the word? Uh, you know, you can make up your own little sentences to remember these different line notes. And then finally, with the space notes on the bass clef, we have all cows eat grass. So I hope that this gives you a good basis to start off identifying notes on the treble and bass clef. And as always, if you have any questions, be sure to reach out to me and I would be happy to help you out.